Hello everyone and welcome to episode 63 of Knowing Wheel podcast and I'm introing this week which has not happened in the previous 62 episodes so it's a it's a, a groundbreaking occasion because yeah I'm our colleague Matt if you want to say hello. Hello. Uh, he's a <laughs> He doesn't want to say hello. He's not feeling too well. Um, so I am I forced him to come on Discord and record a podcast for our Austrian Grand Prix preview. Uh, and then he's probably going straight back to bed. So do you want to say any words at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, like James just said there, you know, I- ignore me throughout a lot of today's <laughs> show. You know, if it looks like I've fallen asleep at some point. It's I literally have just woken up again. I've basically been in bed for about the last 19 hours. It's It's not been the mood. Um, but you know the the things we do for the podcast, aka Jamie forced me to come online today. Yeah, um, I did. But yeah, Jamie, are you going to plug everything you need to successfully? Yeah, I've I've never done this before, but I think we have. Uh, obviously, check the the podcast out on Spotify. Uh, ratings are really appreciated over there. Subscribe to to Matt. Oh, this is on his channel. It's online. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Go check out the links in the description to Manscaped to F1 merch uh buy bit yeah and is that everything one. i think well bear in mind normally it. each week yeah i ask you if i forgot yeah. something because you tend to remember better than me um, okay but there we I go feel like, do I all feel those like a, things i feel like a proud mother hen right now <laughs> i've been let is... loose on the podcast for once right you, so, you yeah, have yeah i'm gonna be i i feel like i've got all the power in my hands but what we're gonna start with is something that you touched on in our silverstone review or maybe it was the preview. Um, but basically, review, yeah. part of the uh, technical directive for the FIA about the porpoising, which hasn't really been spoken about for, it feels like ages, but it's probably about <laughs> one race. Um, part of that, they basically discovered that, well, they, there's suspicions that certain teams have been flexible on their planks under the car, um, to specifically Red Bull and Ferrari have apparently got flexible floors which obviously mercedes are not happy about as the well and all the other teams are not too happy about if it's true um so yeah they're bringing in a new directive to test uh like how flexible these floors are um because currently i don't know if you've seen anything about this matt but um the they currently test uh how flexible the floor is right at the front of the plank and then about a fifth of the way down the plank from the front so basically, oh, okay. from there backwards, they can do what they like, and the FIA don't check, which they oh. think is what Ferrari and Red Bull have been doing. Yeah, I mean, this is, like we said, we did touch upon this. I think it was in the Silverstone uh, review show. Um, but, you know, sort of Mercedes have, of course, been very vocal about it because it's, you know, as always in Formula One, it's whether a team has cheated or whether the FIA, uh, or whether, sorry, a team has interpreted the rules differently, isn't it? F1 is. Yeah. You know, F1 and politics are like cheese on toast, to be honest. Yeah. You know, they, they just go hand in hand. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I mean, really, yeah, I think the big question is for a lot of people, isn't it? You know, could this new directive bring Mercedes right back to the front? Uh, you know, I've, I've seen some people online claiming that maybe they have still built the fastest legal car again this year. <laughs> um but we'll we'll have to wait and see about that. And of course, Austria. I mean, we'll talk more about the Austrian Grand Prix track in just a second. Um, but you know, this place basically belongs to one driver and one driver only. Um, but yeah, maybe you know this could be what brings Mercedes right back into the fight. Yeah, it could be. And we got a, a little taste of what. Uh, well, it was kind of a six-car fight, I guess. Verstappen and Perez kind of were compromised in Silverstone, but we got a taste yeah. of it there. So if that happens for the rest of the season, it will it will give us some more baggers, I'm sure. But those changes, uh, the FA are tightening up on this rule, but it, they were not coming until France. So don't expect any changes in terms of the pecking order, really, until the French Grand Prix in a couple of weeks' time. Um, but yeah, we'll move on to Austria, uh, which is coming up. Well, qualifying is the day this is going out, as long as Matt's not died between now in and a, tomorrow. In about an hour and a half with a bit of luck, yeah. unless, <laughs> unless I have died like Jamie said. If not, it was lovely knowing most of you. Yeah, apart from me. Um, well. <laughs> yeah, it's a sprint weekend, so get qualifying on if you've forgotten about that on Friday evening. Um, I always like the sprint weekends. I think they obviously were very controversial at the start. I think as a podcast, we've come to the consensus that we quite enjoy them for the entertainment's point of view. So, yeah, you got any any uh, exciting thoughts on the sprint format again 
Yeah, no, I mean, like we sort of said, you know, between us, we've seen half the sprint weekends live ever. Um, oh, yeah. That that ratio is going to get binned by the end of the year. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think we both agree. You know, they're they're going to keep experimenting it with a few different tracks. I think over the next couple of years, but. I think if suddenly the FI turned around tomorrow and said next year there's going to be six sprint weekends, depending on, of course, obviously which tracks they were, I don't think I'd be too gutted. I no, I think, I think yeah. yeah, it's they just make the whole weekend format a bit more exciting, I think, yeah. especially on tracks where potentially you need that bit of extra spice. I mean, I guess tracks like Silverstone, like Baku, you can always kind of guarantee they're going to be quite good, uh, but... Yeah, Austria is a bit hit or miss. Obviously, we've been quite lucky with a few races in the last few years. Um, but yeah, tracks like that, maybe the sprint is a bit more useful. But we'll have to wait and see for this weekend. But I'm sure it'll be fun. Um, so yeah, we've got the third distance race on Saturday afternoon to set the grid and also give out some points on Saturday as well. Um, and yeah, interestingly, the Friday qualifying, Friday night, it could be a wet qualifying session, which we've obviously seen that would be three races in a row where it's been raining which is curious because rain isn't that common in formula one usually but if it does happen then yeah we could see another well <laughs> carlos Sainz pole you never know 2016 style i reckon oh yeah hulk on the front row we love that and jv third in the muck yeah <laughs> yeah that was a interesting qualifying session to say the least back in 2016 if you haven't watched it then go search for some clips because you'll see hulkenberg at his best which is always good Sorry, where was he at the end of that one? Uh, fifth or sixth? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> not on the front row anymore. <laughs> no, definitely not. Not on the podium places. Um, yeah, but I think sprint weekends. I'm just to be honest, trying to think of other circuits I would like to see host a sprint weekend because it's it can be kind of counterintuitive, can't it? Mm. Like you think Monza would be a great track for it, and that didn't really no because there wasn't a sprint no there was a sprint there was, in Monza yeah, last didn't, year wasn't didn't there anything. didn't really work all it kind of did was give Valtteri Bottas a good chance to yeah because no, he won the up, sprint didn't he? didn't he yeah he won um, the sprint but had a good penalty so penalty started the, the bag thing. um Spa I think would be quite cool um no, I was just thinking that and then worried that it wouldn't on the other hand because I mean Spa is already I mean that's something else we can discuss isn't it quickly there's more and more evidence to to go saying that it's either going to be Spa or Le Castellet uh, that gets dropped for 2023. And my lord, do I hope it's Le Castellet, not yeah. Spa. Yeah, Spa, I think, maybe make Eau Rouge a bit safer. I think we're all kind of getting to that sort of conclusion. Well, I've seen the onboards for it. It, it looks a whole lot yeah, safer now in 2023. Okay. Um, yes, if it's, Le, if it's Le Castellet and Catalonia stay and Spa doesn't, that's an absolute crime <laughs> that is yeah formula l yeah from then on definitely um but friday but yeah. night qualifying is the vibe for sprint i absolutely weekends. love it Je the silverstone last year when i was there for the sprint weekend the friday I... night friday evening george russell q3 was insane yeah in the williams in the williams um, first yeah because it was a beautiful summer evening wasn't it as yeah. well I, I remember that being sat at home yeah, loving amazing. life um yeah no, i'm just trying to think other tracks that would suit a sprint race. Um, I get, you know, I think we all know why Brazil's got one again this year, obviously after yeah. Hamilton's masterclass last year. Um, Mexico, maybe? Just trying to think, you know, that run down towards turn one. Could yeah, it's get kind spicy. of where you want, you want interesting things to happen, really. Which I think yeah. why, why Spa would be interesting, just because of the, the run up to um, Lacan. Yeah, yeah, be very, very true. It's because it's in like four wide there multiple times, but... Yeah, well, let us know what you think in the comments. Which which track would you love to see get a sprint race? Or maybe you would hate to see any sprint races. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Let us know below. And are you excited for the sprint race on Saturday at Austria? Yeah. yeah. What is next? I forgot I'm meant to be leading this. Sorry. Ye um, we are looking <laughs> at the man who's running his entire career backwards, I think. Oh, yes. Uh, if you haven't seen, it's fairly minor news, but I just thought it was quite funny. Uh, Roberto Meri is the absolute legend from the 2015 Manor team, uh, is back in F2, which <laughs> is not where you would expect him, considering he's literally had a season in Formula 1 before, or half a season at least. Um, yeah, he's he's replacing... Uh, oh, Ralph Boschon. Ralph Boschon, who is also very old to be in F2, but Roberto Meri is somehow half a decade older than Ralph Boschon. <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, why on earth they put a 31-year-old back in a Formula 2 car? I don't know. I don't really know. Like, but, I surely mean... there's people kicking around who'd want an F2 seat who are a bit younger. Yeah, you, you'd you hope so. You'd really, yeah. really hope so. Um, But, yeah, no, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how Roberto Merry gets on. I mean, like we said, he ran in F1 back in 2015, then went back to F2. Yeah, um, last race in, in F2 was the end of 2018. 2018, yeah, and now he's gone back into F2 again. Four but, years I mean, later. <laughs> the, the only possible sort of way I can see myself being really happy with this is somehow it sets in motion a mana revival. You know, yeah. if we can get mana back on the F1 grid. Will then... the lad Stevens, Roberto Meri, 2024. <laughs> oh, mate, make it happen. Make it happen, mana. Yeah, even we though miss I don't mana. Think... We do, even though I don't think they do any racing anymore. I don't think so. Because they were running still in Le Mans, like LMP2s, yeah. and then I think LMP3, but I don't even think they do that anymore. They were from my um, ends as well, back in South Yorkshire. Yeah, they were, weren't they? Yeah, because yeah. it's always the Top Gear clip, isn't it? Yeah, based of, in Sheffield. Our car's <laughs> made of steel. One of the, yeah. Fernando Alonso hits us, that Ferrari is ruined. Wow, you can tell that Matt's uh, maybe had too many medications today. <laughs> Uh, shall we move on to another F2 driver who is a little uh, more fanfare about recently, to say the least, pretty negatively. I, I, don't, I don't think fanfare yeah. is the Can right word. Can you get word. fanfare negatively? I guess I so. think what that is is, you know, what's, like, uh, what's the word when people go around with pitchforks? A mob. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's Yuri Vips, if you hadn't worked that one out. Yeah. Um, came out this week that despite before Silverstone, he got supposedly dropped from the uh, being backed by Red Bull uh, until they had a contract suspended. Obviously, no longer of the test or reserve driver for Red Bull. Uh, it turns out he's still part of the program, the Red Bull Junior Academy, um, yeah. which is a bit curious because it's kind of saying one thing that everyone's giving you praise for and then actually doing something else, which I'm, I don't know, it doesn't sit right with me at all. Yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Because, like we said, you know, the way Red Bull had kind of worded it was obviously he's been booted, but he's actually yeah only been booted from Red Bull's F1 team as such, rather than the Red Bull program. So he's still part of their driver program, which I guess you know, when it comes to you know why obviously High Tech didn't drop him, of course that now makes sense. Um, but. You know, we we just need Liam Lawson to to pick it up and to prove he's yeah. F one material. Yeah, Liam Lawson's you know? not been not been brilliant, but he's got a chance to uh, build off the back of his podium in Silverstone straight away with F two and F three back this weekend. Yes, um, yeah. I mean, it's going to be a rammed weekend once more, isn't it? Yeah. From Austria, um, I don't think it's a bit of a weird news week, isn't it, though, Jamie? Because we haven't really at the time of recording this anyway. We haven't really heard. I don't think any teams are bringing any major upgrades. No, to no, well, they're going straight from Silverstone, aren't they? So there's no real time. Yeah, you sort of think you know a lot of teams often in the past because you know Austria over the last couple of years has been a weirdly significant race circuit, hasn't it? You know, 2020 mm. of course it was the first race back, and they did two races there. Yeah, back to back. And then of course last year was it was the only track we did two races at again. Yeah. So Spielberg's had a lot of F1 over it the has. last two yeah. years. It's becoming a bit of a Spain in terms of the teams know it like the back of their hand. Yes, so. yeah. Um, but I guess that means then, you know, without much major Formula 1 news before we get into the weekend, do we do we jump into predictions? Oh, I guess so. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just closing all my tabs. Let me have a look quickly on the F1... Yeah, I checked Page. before this. Well, I mean, yeah. we, to be fair, we did only record a podcast like three yeah, days ago. Yeah, this was the so. weird thing. I think we were kind of both hoping for a little bit more news. Um, but yeah, not a lot has gone, gone out since the, since then, other than the fact that um, Joe Guan Yu and Alex Harbin are both cleared to race, which is always good news yes, for Austria. Yeah. Um, obviously, horrific crash at the start of Silverstone. Um, but yeah, they're both good to go, um, hopefully. They uh, have clean weekends, so that would be a nice start. And hopefully, well, if it's rainy again, Guan Yu Joe is going to show everyone levels and qualify Q3 ahead of Bottas again. So wow, out qualifying <laughs> Bottas in the rain, what a go! <laughs> Absolutely, I reckon. I reckon I could jump in at Alfa Romeo and out qualify <laughs> Bottas in the rain. 
I don't think you could right now. I feel like your reactions are like half a second. Oh, that? yeah, no. If right now, if I got in there, I'd just be sick everywhere. You'd fall asleep. I'd, I'd do a Mark Webber from, what was it, 2007. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I'd probably also, yeah, fall asleep currently. Um, but I think as well, I was about to say Austria is the, one of the only tracks we've both been to, but now we've both been to the same three circuits, haven't we? Yes. We've both done Austria, yeah. we've both done Spa, we've both done Silverstone now. Yeah, and I'm going to Spa again, so... Yes, that yeah, you change. are. Aren't you? <laughs> you are. Um, let's discuss them. Jamie183, top three predictions for the Red Bull ring. Oh, we've got a sprint winner as well, haven't we? Oh, yeah, we've got four. So we've got five choices. Pole, sprint winner, and podium. Yes, and currently I'm obviously winning. So does that mean I get to go first? You can go first, yeah. I am going to say, you know, let, let's not beat around the bush here. This should be a Max Verstappen dominant weekend. It should be. Should be. However, I'm immediately going to go against the grain, and I'm going to say Charles Leclerc on pole. Fair enough. He's got good form for that, to be fair. I think he's going to be driving with a lot of anger after Silverstone. And one lap pace, Charles Leclerc is still different gravy. He's uh, got know, a lot he, of poles, yeah. He's season. got he's got a lot of poles and no race victories to show for it. Basically, no. his entire F one career has just been a lot of poles with no wins to show for it. Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to that vibe. I'm gonna say Verstappen sprint winner and Verstappen Grand Prix winner. But I'm also gonna say top three Verstappen. Leclerc and you want to put Hamilton in, don't you? I'm gonna say I was really um and about Hamilton. I'm gonna say Perez. Fair enough. So yeah, Leclerc good on Friday, and then Red Bull from there on. You're thinking it's going to take over. Yes, I mean, it's I'm just gonna going to have a bit better race pretty... pace similar vibe I feel you're, like you're not you're going to change it up and be interesting <laughs> so I can catch up I would go Verstappen on pole position okay on Friday pole that is uh, Verstappen to win the sprint race okay Verstappen to win the Grand Prix okay so Verstappen of, dominant weekend ahead of Perez and okay Carlos Sainz what well, happens is Leclerc Santa. Leclerc's got one podium in the last six races, so I feel like I can back a non-podium again. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough, I'll allow that. I mean, that is a mad start, isn't it, as well? Yeah. Um, I guess the other big important thing this weekend, of course, is just to remember the fact, you know, Leclerc and Verstappen have got beef here. They have. I was there. Very You were there, race. yeah. 2019. 2019. When... Yeah, the start of the whole let them race mantra. Which has kind of deteriorated into absolute chaos since The barge them off, man. <laughs> yes. Um, I still think that was a fair move, to be fair. Obviously, uh, I'd be annoyed if I was Leclerc, but yeah. I think it would have been harsh to penalise. And it was a sick atmosphere, so it's worth it. Yeah, I can understand why they didn't penalise, because it would have been a very unpopular decision. Um, but, you know, we, we saw last year, didn't we, of course five second penalties were being handed out like they were going out of fashion because people were barging mm. each other off into the gravel um and again you know f1 still seems to i mean we spoke about this last week f1 still seems to be based on what you push them out into rather than whether you push them out or not mm. yeah which yeah it's a shame but i i kind of i do understand why that is but it I but don't do you like think it. it's right no, I don't. I don't think it's right. No. But I also think the solution isn't to penalise every time you push someone off. Okay. But yeah, okay. they need it's to. It's a very down difficult it issue, isn't it? it is. Because like, imagine the the lap forty five battle in Silverstone. You've got Leclerc, Perez, both getting multiple penalties. If you're gonna give penalties for every time you push someone off. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, a fair it's point. hard. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll wait and see what the FIA are doing this weekend. But there's plenty of gravel, so if anyone finds it, they're likely to get a penalty, or the driver pushing them off it anyway. Yes, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Let's let's make a prediction then, Jamie. How many penalties do we think will be handed Oof. out for forcing another driver off the track? I will yes. go for two. I'm gonna say three. Oh, actually, can I go two for the Grand Prix and one in the sprint? No. 
why? Because I was thinking exactly that. <laughs> okay, I'll go none of the sprint and two in the Grand Prix. <laughs> okay, good, good. Um, anything else that we need to add before we finish this one? I, I really don't think there is. It's been a slow news week. It has been uh, quite a slow <laughs> news week, and luckily for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, really though, you know, that. fair play to Jamie. He has taken over the podcast this week absolutely perfectly. I, I couldn't have trusted anyone else to do it better than him. Um, yeah, you know, just quickly as well, of course, an apology from me. You know, content probably will be a little bit thin on the ground over the next couple of days because of this. Because you your know, immune I, system's weak. Exactly. It's just because I've just been so busy over the last week or so. But, you know, I'm hopefully going to be doing a video, obviously, talking about Silverstone Weekend. Uh, I might also try and do a bit of a sort of race recap from the creator race I did Tuesday night. That was a really good fun evening um, as well. But yeah, I think, Jamie, unless there's anything from you to add, mate, I think you can go and in, uh, go and outro this, sorry, I should say. Yeah, I think that basically wraps us up. I really can't remember how you outro these. Uh... <laughs> you got to put your own twist on it, mate. you got to put your own oh, twist, man, twist on it. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Um... Follow us on Twitter, at least. <laughs> yeah, the Twitter handles are beneath. I tweet loads of absolute rubbish, but like maybe yeah, you one have in five. Been today. One of one in five tweets is maybe quite good. <laughs> I that. mean, it's just been a lot of Top Gear references to try yes. and relate to anything so far today, yeah. which has been weird on my timeline. They, they've missed the mark a little bit today. I've been off form, but there we go. I mean, if you uh, has if you want Boris some... Johnson resigned? Yeah, he, he has. Actually. Has he actually? Did have I you miss not seen the that? News? Oh, no. well, there's some news. Yeah, Boris Johnson's leaving, but not until no, like. I got told he was going to. I didn't actually get told he has. No, he did. Yeah. Oh, so there's some what news. time was that? That was at half twelve. So you oh, might okay. Have been I was asleep by then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, that's off topic as usual. But yeah, if you've enjoyed this podcast, and uh, yeah, let us know what you think. Rate us on Spotify. Like the video. Subscribe to Matt. Follow us on Twitter. All of that good stuff. Yeah. Big I'm ups. Forgetting anything. Thanks for 65k as well. Um, yep. You know, trying to hit 100k by the end of the year. Jamie doesn't think I'll do it. Jamie reckons it's going to take me three years. So <laughs> let's let's prove him wrong. Yes, please do. Um, and, and that battle wraps us up. So yeah, thanks Matt for uh, leaving your bed for a couple like half an hour or so. You're more than welcome. <laughs> and yeah, we'll, we'll see you for the Austrian Grand Prix review on hopefully Tuesday if Matt edits the video in time. Yes, if yeah, I'm still alive by then. <laughs> and we'll see you next time.